I would ask how's it, how's it going for you, but it seems like every time a hit record comes on the radio, I look at the writer credit and go, oh, well, there's yep. another check for Trent Tomlinson. Man, it's it's been great, man. Yeah, I got a I got a uh, I got Scotty McCreary's next single getting ready to come out too. You know, called, a song called Damn Straight. We're 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 excited about that. And just, man, things are great right now. You know, so uh, we're getting ready to. We're back on a road touring, and, and we're excited, bro. It's fun. I, I don't know if I've ever met someone who loved being on stage as much as you love being on stage. It It's truly a different personality. It's an amped-up version of you that, that hits the stage. And I can't imagine the pandemic had to have driven you absolutely bananas. Well, it did. It did. But I, I tell you what I did. I actually I really found some peace in it, though, too, as far as just – working and writing songs and stuff like that. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you had to find something to do with your time and what better, you know, what better thing to do in your time than to write some more songs. And so it really kind of helped me uh, as far as just, you know, getting songs recorded and moving the needle on, on my career you know, a little bit, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I did a lot of work during that time and, and, and I, I actually enjoyed my time to myself, but you were right. As soon as the first show I played, when I got back, it was just <laughs> I, I couldn't sit still the whole time. It was it was a lot of fun, and, and and the show we have now is just amazing. I got the same guy still playing with me after all these years. Oh, wow, we just, great! We we, we we sit down and uh, went went to the rehearsal studio and just rehearsed his music and just and I, I I rehired a bass player that that started with me from the very beginning, and 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 when he come on board, uh, I finally heard the music being played. The, the way I heard it back then, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's just, a, it just, it just breathes a whole new life into what we're doing on, uh, as far as the live show's concerned. So I mean, I can't wait to, for you guys to see it. Well, you know, I always loved the relationship uh, musically and chemistry wise between you and your lead guitarist. I mean, you play guitar, yeah. but there was something yeah. about his presence and the way that, that he delivered the music and you two together, I thought were real magic. Yeah, we, we we truly are. We've been friends for a long, long time. His name is Colt Fraser, and he's he's a fantastic. He's one of the best guitar players in, in all of Nashville, really. You know, what I mean, and, and I, I can't tell you how many artists out there have been trying to steal him from me all these years. <laughs> but he but he loves he loves where he's at. He loves playing with me, and we just have a ball, man. We you know, it's just so much fun. That first time you hit the stage with full band, coming back in front of a full audience, um, a, a couple of questions. First off. Did you blow yourself up? Did you did you blow yourself out in the first five minutes or so because the adrenaline was so great? Well, it, it, I didn't I didn't blow myself out because I actually I, I did a lot of exercising during the pandemic and stuff. So I was, I'm in the best shape of my life right now than I've ever been, honestly. So I no, not necessarily physically, but my but singing. You know, you, your, your voice and your throat is a muscle as well, and if you're not using it on a regular basis, that tires out quicker than anything and so i felt i felt myself in the middle of the set going oh my goodness it's been a minute since i sang this long or this hard or for this and exuding this much energy so that's taking some getting getting used to 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 get your throat your voice back into shape because you know i was used to singing three or four uh times a week you know what i mean and 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 when you're not doing it for a year and a half it's it's something you have to retrain your uh that muscle memory was there a moment right before you went on, right before you counted off the band and, and you kicked into it? Was there just that one moment where you kind of said to yourself, holy crap, I hope I remember how to do this? Uh, well, I, I was. I, I was really nervous, actually. I was like, a absolutely. I was like, I didn't know, you know, I, yeah, you just didn't know what to expect. You didn't know what to expect from the crowd. You didn't know what to, you know, it's been a minute since anybody's seen us play live. It's been you know, it was it was it was interesting, but we the moment we kicked into the first note and I walked out there. And the first show we had was in Nebraska, and there was like six thousand people out there. It was amazing, and they were just loud and singing back every word. And it only took me about fifteen seconds to realize we're getting ready to have a damn good time. Kennett, Missouri, has a population of approximately eleven thousand people. Right. Do you have any explanation for how a town of 11,000 people in the middle of America can produce three songwriters the caliber of Sheryl Crow, Trent Tomlinson, and David Nail? I don't know. Uh, I, what I do know is that there's nothing to do there but farm and fight. <laughs> uh, and, and drink whiskey, you know, uh, you know, uh, and those in that order, really, you know. And so I think we just, I think it's one of those things. There's a lot of great music. We have a, we had a great uh, choir teacher and a great uh, music program at our high school, and I think that really uh, set the tone for for all of us. Um, Cheryl's prose mother, uh, her name's uh, Bernice. She was a piano teacher throughout 
uh, our, our town, and she taught a lot of people how to play piano. And, and there's just a lot of music always around my hometown, believe it or not. And, and so we just, I don't know, man. It's just uh, it's something in the water, that's for sure. I think it's pesticide, but other than that, uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's just boredom, really. It's just trying to find something to do with your time. Trent, I've asked you this question over the years, and I'm always intrigued by the answer you give. Does the music ever turn off in your head? And no, it's my blessing and my curse. Um, you know, because I, I lie in bed sometimes and just go, man, I just got to go to sleep, and then I'm then I'll come across some kind of idea, and then I, then I have to get up and write it down. It's just, you know, it it like I said, my blessing and my curse. But 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 hey. I'll take it, you know. Uh, the good Lord certainly blessed me with the ability to be able to write songs and think this way, and so uh, you know, it certainly made me a living where I don't have to, uh, you know, work a nine to five job, you know. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm always fascinated at the variety of artists that you've written for and that have recorded your song. I think every songwriter of a certain generation, you got to, to have the dream. You got to cut on a George Strait album, uh, Why Can't right. I Leave Her Alone, which is one of the great unreleased George Strait songs of all time. Every now and again, you'll pull it out in concert. It's a fantastic song. Um, but right. you've also written Close Your Eyes with Parmalee, a group. Uh, we'll get to that little teeny song with, with Brett Young here in just a second. <laughs> but but it, it, do you just write with a wide variety of people or... Or how does that work that that your your art gets to so many different different kinds of artists? Well, I mean, you know, being being an artist myself and having hit songs on the radio and having a record deal and all that stuff. I mean, it, it lends you to be in the presence of other artists, uh, you know, to where you become friends with them at some point, you know, or you run you play the same show or same festival that they do, and you just become, you know, buddies with these with these folks, and so therefore it, it makes it a little easier for the songs that you write in order to funnel those songs to these people. You know, it's, it's really kind of hard to, to get somebody to listen to your songs, you know. But when you – I've had the advantage of being an artist before uh, to where I've made friends with these guys and I got their numbers in my phone. And, and so I can, you know, I can make some calls on behalf of the songs that I write, um, you know, to get them placed for somebody – for some somebody that matters could hear them, you know. And so uh, I've been real fortunate in, in that regard, you know. But, I, you know, I write with all these artists. That, that everybody that's on the radio right now, I write with all of them uh, here in Nashville, uh, uh, you know, uh, one time or another. You know, but I find myself writing better songs without when I don't write with with just the artists themselves. When I just kind of get with my songwriter buddies, that's, that's what they do for a living. Uh, I, I, you know, it's, just a, I, it's just a better craft uh, for me anyway. I was so happy for the guys in Parmalee who we've known forever, but they are they were really, uh, for lack of a better term, they were on life support, and all of a sudden they had close your eyes, and it sort of restarted everything for them, and I thought that was great. Yeah, it, th those guys are dear friends of mine too, and they're they're fantastic. They're just a fantastic group of guys and fun to be around, and and they they you know and they're, they're making some waves again. You know, I mean, they, they kind of they, they'll have a hit song and then they'll go away for a little bit. They always find a way to come back and be relevant. And that's what I really love about those guys. And and and, and close your eyes was a funny song. I actually wrote that on a Wednesday, and they recorded it on a fri that Friday. So it was it doesn't usually happen that way. But, no, uh, nothing happens but, that fast. Are you kidding no, me? No, really? But the, 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 the stars align for us on that one for sure mm -hmm. um you really popped into the consciousness of of the country music world with one wing in the fire which you know is a, is a tribute to your dad did right. your i couldn't remember when we lost your dad did your dad live to see you have some success on the radio and and to have a record deal oh absolutely you know he uh he was one of the he, believe it or not he was uh the, my song was i think one wing of fire was sitting at number 11 with a song called boondocks uh, by Little Big Town at number 10. And, and my record, I was doing a big, big push to try to get this song to top 10. And, you know, and they were kind of running through some resistance because when you get to that, that point of the chart, there's, there's such a log jam of people trying to, everybody's trying to fight for that position. And so it's really hard to move the needle. But and my dad uh, actually requested all the phone numbers for all the syndicated radio stations across the country. And he was calling them up on the phone <laughs> going, hey, I'm one wing in the fire. I'm that dude. Play my son's song. And listen, that's, he got my song played and got it to top ten. And he, I think he got my, he got more spins for me than my promotion staff ever did. I, I have I've known you forever. I've never heard that story. Your old man was calling yeah. radio stations? He was calling syndicated radio stations and, and leaving messages and getting them on the phone going, hey, my name's Don Thomas and I am one wing in the fire and my son needs to get the top ten. Y'all need to play his record. That is <laughs> unbelievable. You know, and, and he just 
kind of approached it that way. It was pretty funny, man. And he actually got it done, man. It was it was awesome. Is there a, a moment or a second even when you play that song every night and you play it every night that you just sort of think about your dad and, and, and maybe even him calling those stations or that he's looking down going, man, look at my boy? I mean, I tell you what, man, there are moments that I have, uh, I, I just don't know when they're going to come, but there's moments I have that I just can't even get through it hardly. You know, it's, it's emotional for me. Uh, and then there's moments that it, that it doesn't, you know, and it's just one of those things. I just don't know when it, when it's ever going to hit me. And it, but it usually does when, when I'm in a moment there, the crowd's into it and, you know, and, and just, and just, just seeing uh, how much they still love that song. And that, that song is still, I mean, to this day, man, it's just, it's just, it just stands up. Um, you know, to uh, and, and still makes noise. And, and it, when I hear it singing back to me and all that stuff when I'm live, it, it just, sometimes it just gets me, and I just have to let the, the crowd sing it, you know, and just to get me through it without without breaking down. But sometimes I get through it, sometimes I don't. But it, either way, it's always a nice moment live for sure. Well, another song that's going to be around forever is one you wrote with, with Brett Young, In Case You Didn't Know. And right. um, I, I want to make sure I have the story right on this. The actual phrase, in case you didn't know, your mom loves you, um, that was from your mom. That's where that came from, correct? Yeah, it did. Uh, my dad passed away. He had a heart attack, you know, out of the blue, you know, and it was kind of the scenario like here today, gone tomorrow, and nobody was really prepared for it, you know. And after he had passed, uh, every time I'd talk to my mom uh, in person or on the phone or anything like that, she'd be like, Trent, in case you didn't know, I love you, you know, and as it was. I thought it was kind of her way of letting me know that she loved me as much as she could, as often as she could, because she didn't have a chance to really, uh, you know, say that to my dad before he passed. If that makes any sense. You Absolutely. Know? I mean, I'm sure, you know, and so she just made a point. I just kind of tucked that away in my phone and wrote it down. And and I and I got invited to go down to Mexico to write with Brett Young. This was before he really had a record deal, but he was had some interest at Big Machine Records, and 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 they were basically trying to bring some songwriters down to help him write some songs to, to basically solidify the record deal. And when I got there, uh, they were like, you know, we have all the ballads that we need. We need up-tempo songs. And so I spent three days writing, uh, you know, up-tempo songs for him. And in the last day we were there, I, in my heart, I just felt like we didn't have what I felt was a hit on the three song, up-tempo songs that we had already written. And it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. We'd been at the pool drinking margaritas all day. I was getting ready to fly out at like 8 o'clock that morning. And we were just sitting there. And I pulled Brett aside. And I was like, and I told him the story that I just told you about my, my, my dad passing away and what my mom would say to me. And I was like, man, we don't necessarily have to write this song about losing a loved one. But if we write it about a man's inability, inability to say I love you, then we might have something. And especially if we don't use the word love one time in the song. Uh, and, and I He's like, what do you mean by that? It's like, well, if we don't, because that's what the song's about. In case you didn't know, I'm crazy about you. I'd be lying if I could, if I didn't say I didn't, I couldn't live my life without you. It's, it lends itself to not using the word love, and I think that was the, the really the glue that held this song together. What made it such a big hit? Because women loved it, they loved hearing it, but the guys actually bought into it as well because it's. He, the, the guy never actually gives it away in the song, if that makes any sense. And it was just a big, big record for us, and, and it worked out, man. It was a BMI song of the year, and, and we're pushing like six million albums sold on that. So tell me, crazy. tell me you didn't write that in like 30 minutes and record it the next we day. Did. We did. We, 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 we wrote it in about uh, probably an hour, probably hour and 15 minutes, something like that, and we put a work tape down on it. I will never forget this. It, it, we got done with that song about 4 o'clock in the morning, and on in part of Art of Mexico, which is on the West Coast, uh, it's two hours ahead of Nashville or, or behind Nashville, rather. So when we when we got done with the work tape, Brett sent an email to a guy named Jimmy Harnon, who at, works at Big Machine yeah. Records. So it's at six a six a.m. Nashville time, and immediately he sent an email back. Apparently he was up and heard the song. Immediately sent an email back. Go, this is absolutely a smash! Boom, boom, boom! And it just went from there, man. And it was actually. They actually put a, a song out first as the first single, uh, and I can't remember what the name of the song his first single was. But and as that song was climbing the charts, in case you didn't know, was outselling the single when the single was in top, top five or something like that. It was still outselling it, so it was a no brainer to come with that as the second single, and it changed my life. And I'd like to thank Brett Young for the house. <laughs> I was just going to ask if you bought that area of Mexico <laughs> with that song. <laughs>
Hey, what did your mom say the first time you, you you had that song and you played it for her and you said, hey, mom, that's you. The In Case You Didn't Know is what you said to me. What was her response to that? <laughs> to be honest with you, she remembers it but didn't. She was, during that time, it was such a hard time for her, you know, she said, she goes, she goes, I remember saying it, but I didn't know I said it that much. You know, she was just grieving, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, at that moment. So it really wasn't on her radar how much she actually said that to me, you know. And But, you know, looking back on it after I told her the story, she was, she, I mean, obviously she uh, she thought it was an amazing uh, tribute uh, to to the situation and, and how, I, you know, we didn't take it down a path of a negative song and made something beautiful out of a negative, negative situation, you know? And so, uh, uh, 